e-learning gate. It opens the cognitive learning paths with the help of digital resources. We have our first lesson in physical quantities. Let us discuss scalar and vector quantities. When dealing with science we use different physical quantities like pressure, temperature, force, velocity, acceleration, speed, displacement and many more. We classify them into two groups scalar and vector. First let us discuss scalar quantities. Scalar quantities only need magnitude or amount to express. Direction is not required. Here are a few examples of scalar quantities. Mass, speed, time, energy, volume, area. We will see that why they don't need direction to express. Now let us see why we call them scalars. One can understand them if their amount or quantity is expressed only. Here is an example to understand it better. In a shop you want to buy 2 liters of cold drinks, so it is enough to ask the shopkeeper. That I need 2 liters of cold drinks. Or, do you need to tell him that I need 2 liters of cold drinks at 30 degree angle, which is a direction. Or, I need 2 liters of cold drinks towards north. Which is again direction. If you tell them also the direction that will be funny. Hope you understood that why scalar quantities only need amount and adding direction may make it funny. Now, let us see vector quantities. Vector quantities need amount as well as direction to express them or understand them. Here are a few examples of vector quantities. Velocity, displacement, acceleration, force, weight, momentum. All these quantities have direction. Now the question is do we really need direction? So the answer is, yes we need direction. Look at the diagram and decide which one explains the situation very clearly. Two boys are pushing the box towards each other. Which diagram will you choose to be the perfect understanding of the situation? One, two or three? It is easy to guess. Your guess is correct. It is diagram two which explains the situation perfectly. Now we understood that to explain this type of situation we need amount as well as direction. Here is another example. Consider two situations.
In the first situation, the car moves 500 meters east. And then 500 meters west. The displacement is zero because the object ended up where it started. Now consider for the same car second situation. That is consider it without direction. In this case your answer will be vague. In other words, you cannot find the final location of the car precisely. Now, let us have a look at few questions. In a two-dimensional space, an object moves 5 meters to the east and then 3 meters to the west. What is the object's net displacement? You can use the direction map. Here we can give you four options and you need to choose the correct one. Yes, the correct option is C. Here is a very easy one. We know that force is an example of vector quantity. Thank you for joining us to understand scalar and vector quantities in physics. Keep learning and stay curious.